Welcome everyone to the latest episode of Hotel Tech Unwrapped. The purpose of this podcast is to simplify hospitality technology to empower decision makers generate the greatest return on their technology investment. My name is Dennis Ahern. And my name is Helena O'Brien. And in today's conversation, we're going to be discussing the role of hybrid technology in facilitating the ever-growing need for working while you travel. So Helena, how are you today and how has everything been since the last episode? It's been great. Really good, actually. Um, I've had a very interesting conversation with a hotelier around the telephone system. Uh, they weren't aware that they could actually take the current system to cloud and said, listening to the podcast, they thought it was a revelation. So I said, you're very welcome. And thanks very much for listening to the podcast. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how about you? Oh, yeah, no, it's been interesting. I, I suppose the whole journey has been uh, an interesting one. So I was reading up during the week, you know, most podcasts fail after like four episodes. So I think we're on to episode 10, uh, which is a good achievement, you know, yeah. and you can see why, you know, that podcast would fail that early. Because I think if you're looking for that kind of instant sort of success from it, um, mm. you're you're kind of looking in the wrong place. Whereas yeah. for us, it's been about building up our own knowledge, our own skills, bringing more value to our listeners bringing educational content to the table. We're actually at the end now of series one. Um, mm. So today's episode will be the last full episode we record for series one. We have a special episode to share with everyone, uh, which is an interview we did with Joe Pine, who's the author of The Experience Economy. So we did that a few months back and we're going to share that as part of series one as well and then share out the whole link, uh, you know, to the full series to everyone. So that's uh, really exciting. And yeah, the journey has been great so far and we've lots of plans for the next series in terms of how now we integrate uh, other kind of content, like other experts in different parts of technology yeah. and just try and bring more value and continue, I suppose, to learn from our own perspective, mm -hmm. but more importantly, expose people to kind of context, to ideas, to conversations where they get, you know, it inspires something for them, for their own business. So I'm really excited about that looking forward and I think the journey so far has been very interesting. Absolutely. And actually, we um, were on a panel for a webinar during the week and uh, being able to share a lot of the research and the insights that we collected during our time of uh, researching for the podcast, I thought was fantastic, you know, just to be able to have mm -hmm. that information to share with the audience and continue that um, support and education that we pride ourselves on I thought was fantastic so yeah. I'm very excited to see what's ahead. Brilliant yeah you did a great job on that one and um, a shout out to Net Affinity and Guestline who are our partners in that one and it's part of the Irish Hospitality Institute kind of regular webinar series and yeah it was, it was very interesting I think look the, the main thing is that technology continues to play a greater and greater role in hospitality I think the future of it's just very much like our own personal lives, of course, and that mm. that's always kind of the way it kind of something develops its importance in kind of more day to day life. And then we yeah. have to deliver this experience in hospitality with typically the trend. And like, I mean, yeah, there's so much going on in the tech space. And I think that um, it's an exciting time, you know, and very. yeah, this conversation today, I think is very interesting because um, what we will do is kind of bring in stuff like digital signage technology, like video conferencing technology, how you facilitate kind of hybrid meetings in a hospitality mm. setting and things like that. I, from a personal experience, we, we we do travel a lot in IMS because we work in obviously in Ireland and the UK and in Europe. And then we work with a very diverse range of clients. So like um, many of our clients are in more of a, a, a like a service living, like a co-living uh, type yeah. Um you know, BTR, um, that kind of market, uh, service department, apart hotels, and then traditional hotels, right? So there's a very interesting blend there. So we get exposed to <clears throat> lots of different ideas and lots of ways that different brands are adding value to to a stay, right? And yeah, we've we've obviously heard since COVID this whole concept of the blending of business and leisure and yeah. being kind of pleasure. Um some people hate that term, I actually like it. <laughs> um, and we're seeing that the average stays in hotels or the average stay now when you travel, uh, the general trend is that that is increasing. And yeah. with that, it's this idea of how do you facilitate and like productivity and mm -hmm. work, remote working for that guest when they travel. 
And so we've lots of things to kind of discuss and to share, and we will try and make it relevant, relevant to each, you know, each sort of segment of the overall hospitality and travel sector, if we can, in, in today's episode, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, where would you, where do you think would be the best place to start? Um, where I would like to start is, mm -hmm. uh, we have spoken throughout the entire podcast series about creating that home from home experience for our guests. And I think in the world that we live in today, um, if you consider the clients that we have in the corporate world around audiovisual equipment, video conferencing, et cetera, um, the facilities that they have in their own office space is fantastic. So you have your interactive screens, you have uh, video conferencing and sound bars. Like it's, it's fantastic. It really and truly is. So to get the customer to leave their corporate building and go to your hotel for a meeting, um, I think we need to look at it now from that office to office experience. Mm -hmm. um, because I think that's where we need to start. We need to lay the foundations. And something a hotelier said to me yesterday was how they do speed tests on their phone, right, to see what the distribution of Wi-Fi is like in their building. But we had a whole other conversation about that because we were talking about apps and stuff. But what they said to me, and I thought it was so interesting, they said they didn't realize until this year how important um, the connectivity capacity into their building is and having that actually managed around the building is and they were saying that they have a significant amount of leisure business um, and their biggest thing is they are up against the business that corporate building of a pharmaceutical company or of a tech company where people are coming to stay with them but they're not having the meetings on site that they used to have so mm -hmm. that sparked a whole conversation about what they currently have in place with regards to audiovisual equipment what their budget is like because let's be honest we all have a budget and it's never a bottomless pit of money yeah. um, what the needs of their customers are um, how sustainable is this type of technology as in not just what are the carbon emissions? Like what's the energy consumption, but how long does this equipment tend to last for? Um, yeah. And the questions kept going and going. So, you know, when you start with that office to office experience, I think that's where we need to look at. And um, I think what would be super is if we, if we start with what the journey ultimately can look like and build mm. that roadmap um, for anybody who's listening, they may then be able to go, okay, well, I already have, elements one, two, three, and five, but I'm missing four and six, for example. So if we could start with that, and if you could offer your insight, I think that would be fantastic. Yeah, cool. Yeah, oh, brilliant. Um, so it's interesting because I'm actually traveling to London this week and the event I'm going to, um, I was at it last year. And last year I stayed in a property which is very digitally advanced, which was a very mm -hmm. interesting experience, right? Because um, obviously I booked online, uh, direct, I received an email with a link uh, after my booking, and then I had access to a progressive web app. Uh, so an application that would open in my browser on my laptop or on my phone, yep. right? And after booking my stay, I then had all of these different options to purchase more services during my stay. And one of the things I did purchase was a meeting room uh, because we had different contacts coming to that event with us. We wanted to do a kind of a, brainstorming session because we're working with these partners in in like on different projects mm -hmm. and so i was very easily able to to book like they had a whole range of meeting rooms it was really cool different sizes uh you could basically select a technology experience as well so if you needed nothing but maybe a whiteboard right but yeah. then you could book like a video conferencing screen and you could ask for a certain software to be an option to use like i say a zoom or a teams or that you would you use your, you bring your own device. Um, that was a really great experience I found because I was able to book that meeting room and mm -hmm. what it, when originally booked, I didn't realize actually that this property had these services and amenities available. And okay. I was actually going to book a WeWork space, which was just down the road from the hotel. Um, and it was only afterwards after booking and receiving the email, did you know, we have all of these services and facilities, then it kind of advanced from there. 
And we had a really great experience because we got a really cool room. It was a round table. We had a screen. We could sh share stuff onto the screen. We had, it was a touch screen interactive. So you had your whiteboard uh, built in. It was really good Wi-Fi, of course, uh, which is very important, the connectivity piece. We could have brought in people from remote for that meeting, but it just so happened that everyone is in the room. Okay. okay. But we could have, right? And so I just think then from that perspective, it's as a hotelier to think about how easy is it to book? Like you, you have most properties that we work with have some form of real estate on site. If so, you know, they have different services that is not just the room or your bed and breakfast uh, or, or, you know, the basics, right? Um, how easy are you making it for uh, customers to engage with that? Uh, digitally is amazing. Uh, but also if someone just rings inbound, do you have all of these spaces in your, available in your property management system, for example? So we see some really cool stuff and different property management uh, solutions where they have all the different spaces and services broken out. And then when you ring on the phone, you can book all of this stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the first step on that journey is how we, how do you make me as a customer aware of it? And then how easy is it for me to book? And I think that's just something to think about and, and just have that done in the way that is consistent with your brand and how you approach uh, things generally. Um, so, sorry, I'm just yeah. going to ask now, just so I can get further insight into mm -hmm. this. So you received the email from the hotel yeah. saying these are the other yeah. services. You were able to book the meeting room. Yeah the technology, could you stipulate what you wanted the layout to be? And if you wanted yes, you could, food, so beverage, breaks, et cetera. There, so it was like a round table, a kind of a more of a boardroom style. Wow. And you could do all of this digitally. Yeah. So this was really helpful because it just saved a load of time. And That's it also incredible. gave us real clarity to the, the people on site to say, okay, when that meeting room's in use from like 12 to 2, yeah. that's what that customer wants. And it's very simple. And we lay it out that way, you know? Yeah. And even when we were on the meeting room floors, so you could book stuff on in the basement or you could book stuff in the top floor. And of course there was a price mm. difference, right? But the views and everything, and it depends on what type of session you're after. Cause if it's more of an inspirational kind of ideation session, you probably yeah. want to be in that kind of top floor type of environment. And the digital screens then, so you had like in reception, there was a screen with a schedule of different events or meetings on that day. When you went onto the relevant floor for meetings as well, you had like your little seven inch panel outside the door saying, you know, it's very clearly labeled for the room who has booked it. Even from that perspective, that's a little bit of brand exposure for the customer too, you yeah. know? Um, so, um, I've actually yeah, seen that, hotels using, you know, sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's not, sorry, go ahead. No, I just thought that was, it was, I only literally just thought of that when we kicked off this podcast, because we are going back to the same event this year but staying in a different hotel and it was just like that was actually really good that experience you know brilliant because i am <clears throat> excuse me i have a couple of hotels at the moment that are looking for the uh room signage and yes. uh what's great is like the the solution that we can offer is is allowing them that when the meeting room is out of use um mm -hmm. that they can actually have adverts running on the screen so they're yes. promoting yeah other facilities, yeah. other services within the hotel or uh, types of packages they might do, et cetera. Um, and I thought it's lovely because you never know who's walking past your meeting rooms and where the opportunity is to upsell. So I just thought it was a fantastic approach. Yeah. And that, that's, well, that was like one experience. I think that um, I, the main point there would be just make it easy for your mm -hmm. staff to manage the spaces and assign spaces, make it easy for the customer or the guests to be aware of the spaces and book them, you know, and mm -hmm. if you do that, you've ticked a lot of boxes because uh, then you're only concerned about, okay, how does this flow when the person gets to my property, like physically? And um, we think digital signage has a key role actually in that in the common areas to show schedules. Again, you've got a branding and advertising opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. But even wayfinding, you know, if it's a big building, uh, giving you instructions of how to get to certain places, yeah, simplifies things for you on arrival. Also makes the job easier for the staff and reception because they're not dealing with these kind of repetitive mundane queries that they can actually focus on service and experience for the stuff that matters. Uh, then when you get to the room, have that screen outside the room and have, you know, the schedule and the business uh, branding and stuff for the meeting. Um, Connectivity we mentioned is very important and um, there's different ways you can do things, but the idea of a unique Wi-Fi key, like, you know, mm -hmm. for you, 
for your booking, um, whether you're an individual guest, whether you're a group in a conference room. Um, that kind of technology is available now, and I think it actually offers a lot of value um, because you can bring your, all of your own devices and connect them to a network where they can communicate to each other within that network. So even for me, just as a regular guest who might be staying in like a service department that has a co-working space, um, if I have a unique Wi-Fi key for my stay, I could even set up my printer or whatever devices I want to set up mm. actually in my room in the hotel, be working downstairs and actually still communicate with those devices uh, when I need to. And I suppose what I see commonly as well is like, you know, a printer on site that you can just connect to wirelessly through the Wi-Fi on the printer itself and print as well. You might need to pay for that or what, like there's different ways that that's done. Um, and then in the conference room, it's really about keeping it as simple as possible. So um, there's obviously specific software like Zoom and Teams would be the most popular um, as kind of Teams room or Zoom rooms and you can do integrations uh, either way. So if it's a Teams room, primarily you can integrate Zoom and vice versa. So something we see a lot, Alina, is this um, trend of bring your own device. So yeah, technology massively. in the room that can just facilitate you to run the meeting mm -hmm. from your laptop, but it takes advantage of the big screen and the sound and everything else in the room. So there's loads of flavors or ways of doing that. And I think, but it's something you absolutely nailed in the opening is this, we need to make this as good or better than the facilities that people have in their offices. Yeah. If you really want to deliver the best experience, get people out of their offices, and yeah, those are some ideas, but uh, you know, yeah. There's, there's um, I think the other thing that's really important to note is uh, ensure that your team uh, know how to use the technology that's mm -hmm. in your in those spaces, in the conference and meeting spaces, um, and that they understand the features and the benefits. The full functionality of every piece of hardware should be known and understood by each member of the team because mm -hmm. ultimately um, you have customers coming in that may never have used this brand before. Um, now one thing I have said to a number of clients that I think is really effective is have a little QR code stuck to the bottom yeah. of a TV and have it where they can scan the QR code and all the instructions are there on the person's phone afterwards yeah. so they learn how to navigate through that hardware the benefits but What's super important is to recognize that, like you mentioned about the unique Wi-Fi key, like that's a security element, element that hoteliers could use with regards to requests for proposals or requests for tenders. Um, but you also have the sustainability aspect of having this technology available in your building, that mm -hmm. you are providing this as a service to businesses where ultimately this can allow them to um, show that they are working with partners that are also committed to uh, the the road or the journey to achieving net zero, if that's something that they, they're looking to achieve. But it's really, really important that everybody knows and understands this technology and why it exists and the benefits. It became popular as a result of COVID, but it has been around a very long time. And if I was looking to book a hotel or uh, a meeting room, which we have done as a company on several occasions over the last number of years, yeah. um, we have struggled to find a hotel that can actually deliver the same experience that we have in the IMS office. So what do yeah. we do? We bring the technology with us. Mm. Now, we're lucky to be in that position. Mm -hmm. But not every company is in that position. So what you yeah. want to do is, as a hotelier, you can deliver an incredible experience for your hotel guests, right? You know that you can offer incredible packages for your conference and banqueting experience. Yeah. <laughs> but if the technology element is missing, you might get the customer once. But if they're having to go to the effort of hiring everything in or ask you to hire everything in or it's not even available, mm -hmm. You're, you're missing, I hate saying this, but you're missing a trick. You're missing an opportunity. There's a golden ticket ready for you to grab. And what I will say to people is like, a lot of hotels four, five, six years ago invested in TV screens. Originally, it was projector screens. And about five, six years ago, and I remember because I was in a hotel at the time where we were like, we're going to invest in the TV screen rather than the projector screen for the smaller meeting rooms. And 
you have these fantastic screens, but ultimately they're televisions, right? And you're connecting mm-hmm. HDMI to the back and you're plugging it into your, your, your guest is plugging it into their um, laptop. But like you can transform that into a video conferencing space with the use of a video camera and a soundbar. And they exist where they're built in, right? So all of a sudden you're on that um, journey with your with your customer where you're able to offer them that video conferencing experience as well as everything else that you do at an incredible level. But it's simple and easy to use. It's a plug and play device. The customer is bringing their own uh, laptops. You know, from a security perspective, there's no logging in or logging back out, et cetera. Like there are solutions out there everything. It's ultimately finding the right partner who's going to educate you based on your current uh, technology and how that can be enhanced. And then as you look to make further investments and replace TV screens for years to come, you can be looking at interactive display screens. Do you know what I mean? And those touch screens where um, I love the ones where you, it's it's very similar to, an uh, I say, an iPad, but a tablet where yeah. um, you can have access to all the applications and it can be set up where it can be somebody can be signed out as soon as the meeting uh, is completed yes. through API integrations and stuff like that. But it's just it's such a vast world yeah. and your customers are probably four or five years ahead of you. So you need to pick up the pace. Mm, it is Sorry to say like, it so bluntly. <laughs> but that's very like the guest, the challenge with the guest, you know, like technology. Yeah. COVID has forced the fast tracking of like, you know, the home technology experience and the office technology experience, right? And yeah. people are much more flexible um, in how they think about working now and work and travel. As yeah. I say, we've used lots of meeting rooms around the country ourselves. Yeah. I find offsite brilliant from the point of view of being yeah. able to, especially if you're doing more creative or strategic stuff, just gets you out of your day-to-day environment. It gets you into a different headspace and a different, yeah. you can kind of think a lot more clearly. We've done, as you say, we've done all, we've done that in multiple setups, but generally it has been hybrid. That event, mm-hmm. you, for example, the last big kind of training thing, we bought our own USB um, speaker because we didn't know if the hotel had it. It turned out they yeah. didn't. Um, we bought our own USB camera, just a basic mm-hmm. camera that you'd have at your at your desktop. Mm-hmm. worked perfectly to give very good video into the meeting the microphone pickup worked perfectly to give audio but it's amazing like that that property didn't have that stuff that we weren't even aware it had or it hadn't that stuff after booking mm-hmm. and then you know imagine arriving on with nothing um yeah it's, um, and it's a very common challenge and i love the mobile solutions to be honest um yeah. but, you know i just i always seem to kind of go back to that with clients because they say look we've got multiple meeting rooms uh you know uh, we don't, they, you know, there's a whole mix. Is, it may be like our meeting room usage isn't as high as we would like. Uh, yeah. But there could be reasons for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't want to invest in technology, but buy one solution that you use, yes. that, <clears throat> that you can use to service four or six rooms that are on the same floor mm-hmm. uh, and charge for the video conferencing, like make it a, a book of an option in the booking process. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it's, look, it's, there's loads of things and then like you think about the spaces as well for meetings and for stuff like that uh one of the cool things is those soundproof uh pods uh for you know uh, for one person you see these a lot in offices too but like they're mm. they're quite common in sort of uh ground floor space kind of lobby areas uh on the continent where you have like a one or a two person or a four person pod for yeah. meetings and you know it's totally soundproof within an overall building and stuff and they can look really cool um and do a great job in terms of giving you privacy uh, yeah. audio quality and flexibility to run you know i've i have had like a, you know some presentations as you know can be like you can be at a real decision point with a big customer or whatever and you just you know and you're traveling and it's like well the one thing you need is like a space where you can really focus and a space where the quality of what you're presenting and talking about is coming through on the other side. And I've had experience of doing that on the go. And I think like it's, it's, it's the world of difference compared to sitting in a kind of a cafe or a restaurant or where you're in an environment Massive. where you can't control what is happening around you. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. The, I, there's a, it was very interesting. Actually, I had a hotel that I met uh, when I was in Belfast last week. 
and they told me they had invested in two of these pods. Now, they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. They don't charge for them. They're sitting in the hotel lobby. But the comment they made was they're either going to have to start charging for them or bring more in because they're just in constant use. And I see them in hotels throughout Ireland, but I rarely see them empty. You know, and there is that that thing where you ultimately you need to be able to work from anywhere. Like we learned that from COVID. So if the hotel is offering you a facility where you can actually book a pod or book a meeting room and do what you need to do, um, you're going to keep going back to the hotel. But I think what's really important is as a hotelier, you need to be considering what that environment looks like. So you've just highlighted uh you don't want to be sitting in the lobby having a cup of tea or coffee on a Zoom call with somebody who's, it doesn't matter what level of a client they are, whether they're early on or they're a huge client, you need to be yeah. able to concentrate, right? And it's the same for the pleasure market as we were talking about, those pleasure guests. Um, you need to be able to work in an environment that is similar to that of your home office or your work office. So mm-hmm. if you can provide your customers with the tools they need, such as that private space, that technology that they need, ultimately it's going to transform their experience. So if you're somebody who travels, um, you you blend your, your business and your leisure uh, travel together, then you're going to return to the hotels that actually meet your needs, you know, mm-hmm. and you're going to recommend them to clients. And it also is something that, you know, you can mention as part of that uh, tender process, you know, that you have this all in place because um, yeah. if the comp- if the competitor doesn't, then you're standing out from the competition with regards to the facilities that you have in place. 100%. Yeah. And it's, um, I think that you mentioned a few times <clears throat> the sustainability dimension as mm. well. And, um, I suppose first on first hand kind of experience, you know, us as a business operating a very flexible hybrid working model means that the vast majority of our team work from home basically every day. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the carbon emissions for a company associated then with running the business, you're greatly reducing that depending of course on the type of work that the company does. Um, For hybrid meetings, we know from our virtual and hybrid event service, you know, the the average calculation of of CO2 emissions for people who travel for like a conference or for a meeting versus joining from home, right? Mm -hmm. So there's significant benefits there to be had as well on your own, your own environmental policy and your kind of your, your sustainability journey. How are you keeping your emissions and uh, direct and indirect as low as possible in terms of how your business operates. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've often thought about, I haven't seen it really done anywhere yet, but um, I find when you go to conferences and events, right, there's like, there's a 10 to 20% of people who are like, who there's a huge value in those people being there physically because they're very kind yeah. of social. They're very influential in the network. Um they can connect you with people, they, they have conversations, et cetera. But there's always a percentage of people who attend any conference who like it, the experience would be just as useful for them being remote. Yes. And I've often thought about this idea where could you, if you had a conference center that could take 600 people, could you actually start to target conferences that are much bigger than your venue? So like mm-hmm. conferences that are typically 2000, 3000 people, right? and have a percentage of people physically in the venue do a very well-run hybrid um, model. Because as you know, you need professional kind of PA and sound systems anyway for a room and an audience that big, right? Mm -hmm. To jump from there to having a high quality streaming or production is not that much because you have sound and you have lighting already in place and you just need to then add a couple of extra bits, but it's not huge and usually you're recording the event anyway. So like you have a lot of the things that are already there and I have often thought about this idea where you can facilitate 20% in person, but you have the option for remote. And actually the conference, the event itself could become much more um, engaging and interesting because the people who are in the room are the ones who would be really, really engaging anyway. And, yeah. and networking. the people remote might be more likely to attend now because they're getting access to the information and seeing the things that they would like to see. 
you record it, etc. You know, but from a imagine you're a hotel in a city where you're taking a three thousand person conference out of the city. You're still mm-hmm. filling your own conference room. You're still filling your own hotel, but eighty mm-hmm. percent of the attendees are remote. Um, there's a whole load of win-win in that scenario where you know. Yeah. So I think it's an interesting thing to think about, you know. Yeah, I'll I'll give you a couple of great examples of that. We um the virtual events department, which also does hybrid events in IMS, um, we hosted a hybrid medical conference a few years ago. And there was from memory, I think it was about 150, 180 people could attend in person. Um but the the number really was uncapped when it came to who could attend yeah. virtually, right? Now, to be fair, the person, the organizer was just, she was she was incredible to work with because she very much had um, a view that this information, the education they were going to receive on the day, the speakers that were going to be speaking, people deserved the right to be able to access it. Now, there was a fee, right? But people from anywhere should be able to access it. What ended up happening was it ended up becoming an international conference because you had medical professionals from all over the globe logging on to this hybrid conference taking place in Ireland. And what I was blown away by this organizer was she had calculated the carbon emissions on everything. She wanted to know what the carbon footprint was on the food and beverage that was served, um, how many staff it took to um, run the events, uh, the heat, light, power, everything, everything she went down to find detail on. And it was incredible. And it turns out on the day that two of the the team members that went lived locally. So from our perspective, we look great because they didn't have further than 20 minutes to travel in total. so it was it was excellent. But for her, it was like, you know, she wanted to look at this from a very holistic perspective as to uh, how could you run a conference more sustainably? And it was one of the best case studies we ever had. And I remember mentioning it to a college lecturer at the time. And he explained to me that and this is a, a, a well-known company now that they would have hosted a conference every second year for about the last 10 years right and they Mm -hmm. sell tickets for this conference and they're they're um they're not cheap by any means but you're you're networking with some incredible people amazing opportunities can come out of it anyway uh he explained to me that at its peak they got over 300 people to attend the conference right but during covid they had to change their approach and they decided they were going to do a virtual conference. That mm-hmm. virtual conference in year one attracted nearly 6,000 people to the point that they ended up having to look for a platform that could allow them some online networking opportunities, people to make connections, et cetera. It was, it was incredible how he explained it. Mm-hmm. But then when we could start to have in-person conferences again, they decided they were going to deliver a hybrid conference and basically it was going to be capped at 180 people in person and then it was capped at 6,000 for remote because Mm -hmm. ultimately they still want people to be able to network um, whether it be in person or online but he said it transformed what they did as a business for a major event that was hosted every two years overnight And that the yeah. hybrid element was all of a sudden a serious focus for them. And what yeah. was interesting was when I explained our medical conference, he said, I hadn't even thought about the sustainability aspect of it. That's something yeah. we now need to be recording yeah. moving forward. Yeah, yeah so mm. there, there's great examples out there. It's just, and look, I say this to hotels all the time. Like when you're talking about big conferences, right, you have beautiful big conference and meeting rooms. You don't need to be investing in all the cameras and the lights and everything else work with the companies that are experts in that, bring them to the table, but have those partnerships where ultimately you're able to offer that solution to your customers. And whether it's, you know, a conference organizer or it's a a corporate client of yours, just get it in front of them and clearly communicate like this is what you have to offer because there are hotels out there that have it. You just want a piece of the pie, you know, and you're not having to make a significant investment. All you're doing is developing a partnership. 
Hundred percent, yeah. No, there's a load in that to unpack, but hopefully it's giving people Sorry. ideas. <laughs> no, but that's um that's the idea, you know. And um I think that's the other benefit that people don't consider enough actually is the ability to bring in guest speakers and con subject matter experts from anywhere in the world into whatever it is, a meeting, a conference, yeah. whatever. You know, your reach goes global straight away when you're mm. In, and I mean, in my experience, you know, people, we have this perception that, oh, that speaker must be live and in person for me to get the most value out of it. But I yeah. have been to many events where we've had someone in from remote speaking and you could hear a pin drop in the in the conference mm -hmm. uh, room. You know, yeah. everyone is fully engaged and listening. And for me, it has it hasn't taken from uh, that experience as long as the person on the other end is you know, has a bit of, is a conscientious in terms of how they set up like a decent camera, mm. decent light and stuff like that and good audio quality. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a huge benefit, you know, so look, we've covered a lot of ground. So, um, yeah. we need and to I feel like we could keep going. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing, you know, so, uh, yeah, we, we, um, look, we are targeting shorter episodes in the future, but, um, we haven't mastered that yet, Alina, in series one, but we get there. Yeah, we um, get there eventually. So still be putting a little countdown clock on the screen in front of us telling yeah, us you, yeah. you need to wrap up lads you need to wrap up <laughs> what people don't realize is Cormac is here in the background as a producer and he can talk live and you won't hear it from remote but we hear it you know so he can give us a a prod every so often but um yeah look it's uh <laughs> there we go all parts of the learning experience but Helena three key takeaways for today god it'd be hard to summarize um I think the first one that's really important to, for me, because I come up against it with, with clients on a regular basis, ensure your team buy into this technology, ensure that they understand it, they know how to use it, um, they know the, the features and the benefits and, and why this technology exists for your customers. Incorporate as part of your head of department meetings or team department meetings and become so familiar with it um, that you would see this as you would see the technology as great value for yourself if you were yeah. looking for something. Um, yeah. So that would definitely be the top one for me personally. Mm. How about you? I agree. And one of our clients actually said to me that they challenged their teams to run their own meetings internally every so often, right? To run us mm. end to end, including the tech. And it's a great, great way to train uh, staff. And yeah, I think the, the digital aspect of the experience, like obviously we're very focused on technology throughout this podcast series, but the one, the, <clears throat> the example I gave for that, that property in London, like that was an amazing experience to be able to book mm -hmm. exactly what you wanted, to know that it was available when you got there, it was set up how you asked, et cetera, able to pay online. There was no, you know, it was, it was a super experience end to end. So that digital journey, uh, mm. you know, whether you're handing all of that to the guest or not, you know, it might be digital for your team to be able to know what spaces are available and book them, et cetera, and allocate them. Yeah. But ideally you extend that out to the, the guest or the customer as well. And it can be a digital experience end to end from booking through to the digital signage when you land in the lobby, through to the screen outside the room, through to the interface you have in the room. I think that's, um, that's really important to consider. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, what do you think for number three? Uh, create that office from office environment. Create that mm. experience for your guests that you do so well throughout your property, but do it where you consider what their office environment is like and recreate that uh, in your meeting rooms. And yeah. do it with sustain your commitment to sustainability in mind because um, longer term, that's ultimately what's going to support you um, in converting business like this, like understand the technology, understand its carbon emissions. Um, and let's be honest, a lot of what we're talking about, it's plug and play. So it's not it's not dependent on power. So um, and actually adding to that, find a really good uh, video conferencing or audio visual, whichever term you prefer to use, partner who's going to work with you every step of the way, who's going to educate you along the way. And ultimately, they're the people who are the experts. They have the knowledge. So rely on them. Ask them every question. Ask your customers what their needs are. But the the office from office environment, I think, is going to be key. Yeah, cool. I think those are three great ones. And there's lots more we could add. They're, yeah. they're, consistent. they're consistent principles every week, aren't they? Like, you know, um, so... 
uh, the importance of Wi-Fi and connectivity to facilitate everything, et cetera. But listen, I've really enjoyed um, <clears throat> the whole series, actually. It's been great to, um, I suppose, work on this, do the research in different areas, learn new yeah. ideas, get feedback from people and all that. So um, I hope you've enjoyed it too. And we'll do one more, which will just be the introduction to the Joe Pine interview to frame that for everyone. Then series one will be done and we'll share out the full link uh, for both Spotify and YouTube from there. So uh, thanks a million, Helena, uh, for all your time uh, in this series. And uh, thanks everyone for listening. And thank you, Dinny. And thank you so much for everybody listening and for your support and your feedback and everything. It has been fantastic. It's been definitely an educational journey for me. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the next series. So thank you all for listening. Yeah, and a final thank you actually to Cormac, who is the oh, producer yes. in the background. Uh, it keeps us uh, in line. And um, <laughs> he's sharing also, feedback with us now, folks. <laughs> Drucy as well, uh, from a marketing perspective, in terms of you know everything is produced in house and it's really high quality, and it's a great reflection actually on the team we have here in IMS yeah. as well. So, thanks a million, Cormac and Trudy. Thanks, Alina, and look forward to series two.